Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing practice with the cross product. This is problem one from section 1.3 of your free online discrete math textbook. And I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can check that out. All right, so let's get started. We have two sets here, A and B. And the cross product is the set of all ordered pairs where the first element is in A and the second element is in B. And so we can have, for example, the first coordinate be zero and the second coordinate be two. We can do zero and three, because again, zero is in A, three is in B, and so this ordered pair is in the cross product. We could also have two, two, and two, three, and we can also have three comma two and three comma three. Now I wanna mention that two comma three and three comma two are not the same ordered pairs. They're absolutely not the same. And that's it, this is A cross B. But what about B cross A? Well, it's the same thing, except in this case, the first element comes from B. And so for example, this point right here can't work because zero is not in B, but we can just flip all of these ordered pairs and that should be fine. So we can do two comma zero instead and three comma zero and two comma two and three comma two and two comma three and three comma three. So almost the same set, but not quite. They're not quite the same. And that's really crucial. If you have two different sets, then the cross product is not a commutative operation on sets. All right, let's move on to part C where things are a little bit trickier. I like this problem because it slowly increases in difficulty as we move forward. So now we're including set C. And so in this case, it's kind of like a three-dimensional representation of all the ordered pairs. So our first one comes from A. Second one comes from B, third one comes from C. And so that's a point in this cross product where zero is in A, two is in B, and one is in C. And we need all possible ordered pairs here. So we could do zero comma two comma four. We can do zero comma three comma one. We can do zero comma three comma four. We could do two comma two comma one, and then two comma two comma four, and then two comma two, two comma three comma one. <laughs> this is getting a little hard to follow. Two comma three comma four, and then three comma two comma one, three comma two comma four, three comma three comma one and three comma three comma four and those are all of the possible points that we can get in a cross b cross c so this is what that universe looks like now i want to clarify something about the cross product you've already seen the cross product in your life before if you've ever seen an x y axis that is the cross product of the real line with the real line that's the whole cross thing, right? That's the, and then when you add a th third set in the cross product, then it's a three dimensional thing. So you might look at this and say, wow, these look like ordered pairs in like a 3D space. But here's the thing, that's 100% correct. That's 100% correct. These points, all of these points, if you graph them on an X, Y, Z axis, would represent the universe that we're talking about here, A cross B cross C. This right here though, is the universe the total of that universe. And so you might say, well, that's not all of three space, right? We're missing a lot of points here in R3 or in the three dimensional space, right? Where's five comma five comma five, right? So we're missing a lot of points from R3, but that's because we're not working with R3. That's because we're working with A cross B cross C, not R cross R cross R, right? So because of that, we're limiting ourselves. And so you, you might think, well, these are like 
you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different ordered pairs. By the way, from the book, they talk about how the cross product, the, the cardinality of the cross product is the cardinality of each set multiplied by each other. Part of the reason why they use multiplication for cross product. And so the size of A is 3, size of B is 2, size of C is 2, which means the size of A cross B cross C is 3 times 2 times 2, which is 12. And so, yeah, there are 12 points scattered across R3. And those points make up the entirety of this universe, of this cross product. And so drawing an X, Y, Z axis here doesn't really make much sense to do that because that's overkill. It's too much. We only need just eight points on, on this graph, on this X, Y, Z graph. And that is the universe. These eight points, that's the universe that this lives in. Let's keep going. Part D. Part D is the cross product of you, the universe, and the empty set. You might say, what happens when you cross with the empty set? Well, keep in mind that the cardinality of this set should be the cardinality of you times the cardinality of the empty set. And the cardinality of you is 5, and the cardinality of the empty set is 0, which means that the cardinality of you cross the empty set is 0. But there's only one set ever that has zero elements and that's the empty set and so part d is the empty set part f is b squared but b squared is just another weird fancy way of writing b cross b which is that's interesting how do you cross two comma three with itself well you can think of this just like every other problem except you can imagine this being two comma three and this set also being two comma three. And so the possible order pairs would be two comma two, two comma three, three comma two, and three comma three. And that is the answer to part F. What about part G? So this is B cubed, which is B cross B cross B. So this is the set of ordered triples, not ordered pairs, ordered triples which is two comma two comma two. Those are all in B. Two comma two comma three. Two comma three comma two. Two comma three comma three. And then three comma two comma two. Sound like I'm saying some weird like ritual over here. Three comma two comma three. <laughs> I just need raid music or something. <laughs> And like, <laughs> anyways, um, three comma three comma two and three comma three comma three. Total of eight elements in this set. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, I see 24 numbers. What do you mean there's eight elements? Keep in mind that the ordered pairs are objects in and of themselves. They're the elements of this set. So... If I were to ask you, what does an object in the set look like? It looks like an ordered pair. You wouldn't say it looks like a two or a three. No, that's not what these look like. These don't look like twos or threes. These look like ordered pairs. There is a massive conceptual difference between the two. All right, last but not least, we have H, which is B cross the power set. So let's first figure out what the power set of B is. So let's first figure out what the power set of B is. This is a set of all subsets of B. So we can have the empty set. We could have the set containing two. We can have the set containing three. Or we can have the set containing two and three. So now this is where things get a little weird, right? So we have to do B cross the power set of B. So the first element has to be in B. That's easy. We could just pick two. And the second element has to be in the power set. Now, this right here, this empty set, is an element of the power set of B. Whereas over here, this is the thing we're crossing. And so there is a difference here. 
in this context, in our context, in the context of part H, the empty set is an element, whereas in part D, the empty set is not an element. So my second coordinate would be the object in the power set of B, and that is the object, the empty set. We could also have three comma the empty set. We can have two comma the set containing two. We can have, I'm going to scroll down. We can have three comma the set containing two. We can have two comma the set containing three. We could have three comma the set containing three. We got two more. We have two comma the square root of two and three square root the set containing two and three. And last but not least, we have three comma the set containing two and three. And this is what the ordered pairs look like. Now I know you might be wondering like, wait a minute, what does it mean to have like an element in the ordered pair that's not a number? I've never graphed something that's not a number. And I understand that things get a little weird when you start changing the axis and the, especially like the visualization of what that axis is, but it's still possible mathematically. This is still perfectly fine to do. Anyways, thanks everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.